Good afternoon and welcome you again to this one hour special program where we look at issues concerning election, electioneering and what have you to make good the country of our nation. This is a program powered by SDN, that is Stakeholder Democracy Network. Before we start proper, let's take a message from the sponsors. Radio Nigeria, Quick 106 to 5 FM brings you a one-hour live interactive program every Thursday from 1 to 2 p.m. As the elections are here already, the program seeks to educate the people on the need for violence-free election because election is not war. Time, once again, is every Thursday from 1 to 2 in the afternoon. This program is powered by Stakeholder Democracy Network, SDN. Glad to welcome you proper to the program Security Matters. Today's own we're looking at um, um, election security towards 2019 Bielsa State Governorship election on um, in, in November to be precisely. And uh, we need to look at uh, what everybody is expecting. Well, before we start, let's look at it from this perspective that the Nigeria's electoral process has a perennial history of insecurity usually created by desperate members of the political class at the local, state and national levels. These are aimed at forcefully capturing state power primarily for primordial interests and not for service delivery to the citizens. Citizens therefore cannot participate effectively in an electoral process that is characterized by insecurity, thereby leading to the declining curve of voter turnout in most of the elections conducted in Nigeria since 1999. That is the return of democracy uh, from the Second Republic. Okay, that should be the Third Republic, to be precise, okay? Uh, the last 2019 general election cycle in Bielsa State witnessed pockets of incidents of electoral violence masterminded by corrupt politicians in collaboration with compromised state security officials as well as their non-state actors such as cultists and political thugs. The police is constitutionally seen as the coordinating election security agency. Of course, internal security is in the hands of the Nigeria police force and therefore the electionary process where there is any problem we look up to the police. But regrettably, in recent times, the military and other security organizations have been more visible during elections to the extent of aiding and abetting high-profile politicians in disrupting polls and invading collation centers. Well, these are issues we'll all discuss together. Today, therefore, our discussion will be anchored on these and many more as the program evolves. I am very happy to introduce my guest. Of course, is a very young gallant officer, the police image maker of Bielsa State, and the person of superintendent of police, Asnim Botswat. That is the name. Well, most of us will call this the Botswat, but he told me the name is pronounced Asnim Botswat. I hope we'll learn to call his name properly. He's the Bielsa State Police Public Relations Officer. Uh, Asni Butswat, please, you're welcome to this program. Thank you for having me. Well, my name is Tony Willis, or rather, if you know me well, Aiba Tony Wilbila can go for it. Well, um, for the listener, we have provision for you because without you, we'll have no business being in the studio. Therefore, you are a stakeholder in this program. At the appropriate time, we will throw open the phone line so you could contribute or make remarks on what we are going to discuss. But please, I want to crave your indulgence.
to bear with us that when your call comes through and you are on, concentrate mainly on what we are discussing and not anything outside uh, the purview of our discussion today. And be brief so that others who may come after you may have time to air their views on this program. Together we can make a better society. Uh, once again, you are welcome, my dear guest. Thank you. Now, from the background, internal security is the sole responsibility of the Nigeria police. And when I was a little boy, of course, I never saw the army. Of course, things were not like this. So, everyone started knowing the police. As late as even the early 80s, in some remote areas, they see soldiers as uh, foreign, who, who, who they know is uh, the police. They never knew there is an organization like the, the Nigerian Armed Forces. Of course, the duties are lined up the way it should be. Everyone is responsible for particular and specific duties in service to fatherland. Now, having said this, how prepared is the Nigeria police and other sister security agencies in policing the state ahead of the November 16, 2019 governorship election in Bayelsa State? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Nigerian Police Force, most especially uh, Bayelsa State Police Command, is prepared towards the elections. And uh, just last week we had uh, local government elections. Before that, the Commissioner of Police called all the stakeholders. We had meetings with the traditional rulers. We had meetings with relevant youth bodies. We equally had meetings with the uh, IPAC, the Interparty Advisory Council. All these meetings were geared towards ensuring a peaceful and credible elections. And uh, we thank God for the outcome of the local government elections. And we are going to replicate the same for the gubernatorial elections come November this year. Uh, yes, uh, from the echoes of the just concluded uh, uh, local government uh, elections, of course it is not your duty, it's not your responsibility. Um, we never had any ugly incidents this time around by way of uh, snatching of ballot boxes, shootings and all the rest. But we learned from the reports coming in from the field that uh, in some areas, election never took place. Of course, it's not your responsibility, as I said. And so, uh, do you have anything to say on that? Well, uh, we have um, deployed our men uh, to the local government areas for the elections. And uh, based on the feedback we got from our men, obviously our duty is to just provide security. We are not uh, bisect as it is. We are not uh, observers and we have provided security and the outcome was peaceful. <laughs> okay, um, please, uh, would you like to use uh, the experience you've gotten from this recent uh, local government chairman councillorship election as um, um, a yardstick to conduct same your men in the forthcoming governorship election? Well, I wouldn't really rely on that because, um, you know, uh, there are a lot of interest, interested parties for the, local, uh, for the governorship election, quite unlike the local government elections. So we are going to, um, we, uh, we are going to envisage a lot of activities. Uh, you know, we cannot rule out uh, politicians using uh, talks for violence. We cannot rule out the possibility of having uh, so many players in the field, unlike the local government elections that just passed. So the plans we will have towards these elections will be quite different from the ones we had uh, in the last local government elections. Well, even if you are not ruling out the possibility of uh, some unwholesome activities, um, the police has a responsibility to equally enlighten the citizenry. That look, the laws will be enforced. If you run counter to the laws of the electoral process, the police will take you on. Are you doing sensitization to create awareness? Because if you don't say anything, some of us can take the institution for granted. 
Well, a uh, part of uh, do sensitization is my presence in this uh, radio station today. You know, and I've been going to other radio stations, and we have been calling on all the relevant uh, community leaders to make sure we talk to them so that they will carry the, that message back to their community so that people will be shown all form of toggery, people will be enlightened about the electoral process and the laws that guide the process. Yes, from past experiences as the law enforcement agency, uh, what will you say normally contributes to violence from your observations? Well, uh, partly, I wouldn't say from my observations, but from our investigations. Okay. Because after arrest, uh, we conduct investigations and uh, we get to arrive at some of those uh, factors that lead to those uh, violence in the first place. You know, people are having that kind of feeling of a um, uh, do or die affair. If it's not me, no one should come in. And that's why we're always saying that uh, they shouldn't look at elections like that because uh, if you continue to look at it that way, that means we continue to witness violence in the process. People should uh, begin to look at it as um, uh, a means to select someone that can serve the state better or your immediate community better, other than looking at it from the angle that it must be me. If it's not me, no one else. Okay, having said that, as we said earlier, uh, you are not the only security outfit, although the internal security is in your hands, but there are a lot of collaborators to arrive at um, uh, an acceptable means of securing the territorial integrity as well as the security and peace of the country. Now, what is the level of co collaboration you have with INEC? Because if you're on the ground and you are not collaborating effectively with INEC, then we will not achieve results. Well, uh, we have uh, a body we call uh, ISIS, uh, Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, which uh, is made up of um, the police and the INEC, then all other sister security agencies and the National Orientation Agency. This is a body that meets regularly, most especially towards um, election periods so that we can uh, iron out issues that will lead to the success at the polls, issues that will lead to uh, the success of um, preparations for the elections, the election proper and how to address post-election violence. And uh, that meeting I've started uh, is ongoing already, you know, because we have met a couple of times and we continue to meet towards the November elections and even after the elections. Uh, will I be wrong to say that um, your men are everywhere? At least uh, there is a DPO in each of the local governments. And therefore, in terms of mobilization and logistics, you may not have very serious uh, problems like some of your sister agencies. Will it be right? Well, uh, as you are aware, police is the lead agency. Even all the sister agencies, they normally bring their men to our headquarters. We do the deployment. They don't deploy on their own. And uh, because of the spread, we have an advantage. But the major challenge concerning the deployment in this terrain is the nature of the states, which is uh, largely uh, riverine. You know, we have uh, logistic challenges. You know, when it comes to deployment. But uh, what we normally do to address such challenges is to start deployment on time. Maybe if the elections is to hold on Saturday, we will start deployment by as early as Tuesday or Wednesday so that the craft we have uh, will be able to go to the hinterland, deploy personnel, came back and go to other locations and deploy personnel adequately before the elections. Yes, uh, watercrafts, just as you said, is of vital importance. Now, do you have enough of the facilities, just as you said, going and coming, which means uh, <laughs> you don't have uh, enough Yes, that's why we, we start deployment on time so that some of them can be able to deploy to some locations, come back and deploy so that at the end of it, before from Tuesday, before Friday, we'll be able to deploy all our personnel to the locations for the election. Yes, this particular election in Bayelsa State is a, a staggered one. Therefore, you will have enough manpower and everything you need 
to guarantee the electorate peaceful, violence, free election. Is it right? Yes. Uh, even the previous, uh, this local government elections, we have men that uh, came from Benin and uh, Delta, you know, which is part of this zone, the zone 5, which is made up of Delta, Edu and uh, Bayelsa. So going forward for the local for the gubernatorial elections come November, we will even have more personnel from neighboring states other than Edu and Delta, because um, uh, just as I earlier mentioned, there are a lot of key players. So we need to uh, adequate men to cover those pooling units. The required number that will cover those pooling units and all other locations to ensure a violence free elections. In case you're just joining us, you're on to Creek 106.5 FM here in Yenegua, and the program you're listening to is uh, uh, election security. Of course, we are looking at uh, the build-up to the 2019 Bayelsa State Governorship election come November uh, 16. Well, having said that, uh, I have the singular privilege of hosting the Bayelsa State uh, Public that is police public relations officer in the person of a uh, superintendent of police, Asnim Botswat. He is there and is the one you are listening to. Uh, so at the appropriate time when the phone line is thrown open, you can interact with him uh, so we can get results from your end as well because no one knows it all, just as he said a while ago. And this program is powered by SDN, that is Stakeholder Democracy Network. They are the sponsors of this program. Uh, PRO, have you conducted any form of election risk survey in the eight local government areas of the state? If yes, what measures have you put in place to curtail the likely occurrence of the identified risks? Well, uh, before now, we, uh, we had a committee a joint committee with other sister security agencies that visited all the RAC centers, that's the registration area council centers. And uh, not just the RAC centers, we were able to visit some of the polling units to identify them ahead of the elections. And uh, what we notice in some of the RAC centers, because those RAC centers are areas that materials will be kept overnight before the elections because there is no way we can deploy materials on the election day to some of those locations and uh, it was rightly observed that uh, some of those uh, centers which uh, most of them happens to be community town halls and schools some of them are not properly fenced and uh, some of them um, even uh, they, are, they, they are isolated some of them are not even having the, um, a form of protection from the classrooms. That's the windows are not properly fit. And uh, in some cases, we recommended that there should be a change from those particular venues that we observed they were not uh, in good shape, which uh, some of them were changed. We changed the locations to other facilities that are better. And uh, the measures we are going to take to make sure that, uh, for instance, areas that are isolated is for us to deploy enough men to secure the electoral materials ahead of the elections. And uh, for areas that are not fenced, equally what that's what we are going to do, we are going to deploy more men. But for areas that don't have uh, proper fittings, you know, we suggested that uh, they should uh, look for alternative uh, locations to be cited as rack centers because uh, uh, the, the major activity happens at the rack centers. Those are areas that materials will be kept before distribution. So those are the measures we have taken and um, some of the pooling units, we advise that uh, instead of having scattered pooling units, we should have a cluster pooling units you know, at a very big field so that we will be able to adequately monitor and manage uh, the movement of the materials. Okay, at this point, I think it is only um, wise that uh, we involve the listener out there. 
and uh, the studio number you can use to reach us here live is 0806 601 6694 again 0806 601 6694 if you call this number you'll be live with us here in the studio to make your contribution or ask questions or contribute whatever you know that will help even the police and sister security agencies to perform well you are at liberty to do so in the service to your fatherland yes uh, ppro um what is the level of uh, cooperation you normally get from the traditional rulers and youth organizations okay we have a call already hello yes uh, uh, PBRO, somebody's greeting you. Yeah, good day. How are you? Yes, I'm officer. Good day, sir. He said good day, sir, again. I'm with you. I can hear you. Go on. I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, this is good, sir, because I'm calling from a DJ. Oh, okay. Uh, the, like, uh, from all the people now, uh, okay, it's so clear to us, but I think it is of people who are uh, uh, asking uh, maybe who are committed to fighting the fact that has been there, you know, uh, taking to court or uh, jail for offensive political service, especially so whereby it's not only for offensive, that gives room for others to do it. So I then get into the past where people have been applying for offensive. Thank you. Yes, um, the major challenge we have with um, prosecuting um, offenses as a result of um, elections is um, to pin a particular offense to the electoral process. Mm -hmm. In most cases, um, what we end up having is uh, somebody committing an offense at that period, but not necessarily an offense that is linked to the elections. Now, there are other cases of um, snatching of uh, ballot boxes. There are other cases of arresting someone in position of materials uh, that are not supposed to be okay, in this position. Hold on, sir. We have a call on the line. Hello? Hello? Good afternoon. Hello? Yeah. Uh -huh. Good afternoon. Is that a quick happen? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to speak with uh, the... The PPRO. Uh, uh, the police PRO also. Okay, yes. please. Uh, uh, your name and where you are calling us from? Okay, I'm coming. I'm calling from uh, a one small committee known as Akoloma. No, it's good. Your uh, name? Hello? Yeah, your name, please. My name? Yes. My name is uh, Fira. I mean, uh, Victor. Okay, Victor. Please go ahead. Okay. I want to, I want to understand uh, this uh, RAC Center you uh, made mention of. That, uh, I'm not clear with that uh, RAC Center, the name. Okay, uh, RAC. Okay, uh, rack center. Uh, okay, he, he wants to know the meaning of rack. Uh, rack is actually yeah, yeah, yeah. a uh, registration area center. Okay, thank you. Yeah, rack is registration area center. All right, <laughs> yes, continue please. Okay, so um, for such uh, cases of um, someone in position of uh, materials, most especially, let me see, whether sensitive or non sensitive materials mm -hmm. at the time of elections. Those are some of the cases we had, uh, I think, in the last elections. Not just this last local government elections, but the last um, elections. And uh, some of those cases uh, were investigated. And uh, I strongly believe some of them have been charged to court. I cannot uh, readily mention that they have been charged to court because I have to liaise with the department responsible for that. But I know that we had suspects in the past, and those cases were investigated. Yes, um, it's interesting to hear this. Uh, the ordinary man in the street believes that when you arrest offenders uh, for electoral processes and the rest, that no sooner had, had you arrested somebody, some big men will come and speak to you and the culprits are left of the hook. Well, yeah, I, that is the general belief. Yes. Well, I wouldn't be specific in this instance, but uh, most people are even ignorant about uh, what the law says or the level of involvement of the suspects. 
and the punishment for such offenses. You know, whether those offenses are actually bailable, whether they are not bailable, whether uh, if convicted, uh, the person will be made to uh, pay a fine, there will, whether there will be option of fine. So most people are ignorant about these processes. Some of those ca cases obviously are available. So the police will grant bail, but the case will continue in the court. After conviction, some of those cases, there is an option of fine. So if he meets all those conditions, of course, you will see him on the streets, because that's what the law says. Uh, yes, if somebody is armed within the periphery of where election is taking place, even as a layman, I want to believe it's an offense. Yes. Sometimes in areas, uh, thugs normally come with machetes and even firearms to scare people or in some cases inflict injuries on the electorate. In instances like that, what do you do? Well, um, while conducting elections, because the law does not make provisions for even the policemen to carry arm to that polling center. So the policemen at the polling center doesn't even carry arm. But we have another layer of security outside the police center where you have armed men. You still have another outer layer where you have um, men on patrol. Then in the case of Bayelsa, we still have another layer by the waterfront. That's the exit and entry points to some of those communities where you still have armed men. In most cases, if need be, we use the army or the navy to man those waterfronts. So in most cases, uh, the responsibility of um, the people that are there, the policemen that are in that inner layer of the pulling group, is to alert those that are armed from the outer layer to come and arrest those that are there with arms. Is it to convince and uh, build that confidence uh, in the electorate? Um, these are isolated issues, and therefore when they occur, it will be proper, even if they are charged to court, whether uh, the offences committed are billable or not, uh, efforts should be made for the uh, general public to know that yes, arrests were made and these were the outcomes from the uh, courts. It will really put to rest and will this uh, agitation. We will equally uh, employ uh, journalists like you to carry on <laughs> investigative journalism. Uh, oh, you are throwing a back at us. Okay. That will, uh, that will actually uh, assist all of us, I mean, even the members of the public, to be properly informed about police investigations. Okay, at this point, um, let's pause for a message from our sponsors. Live in Nigeria, Cruise 106 for 5 FM brings you a one hour live interactive program every Thursday from 1 to 2 pm. As the elections are here no. already, the program no. seeks to educate no. the people on the view for violence for the election because election is not war. Time see, once again is every like Thursday like from 1 to 2 in the afternoon. This program is powered by yes. Stakeholder yes. Democracy yes. Network, SDN. Some people are assigned, yes. As they show that. Oh yes, the program is powered by SDN, that is a stakeholder democracy network, and we're still discussing uh, election security towards 2019 by assisted governorship election. And uh, my guest is the uh, police public relations officer here in Bayelsa State, superintendent of police, Asnim Bootswat, and uh, he's doing a good job here. Um, let's come back to the program in case you were just joining, the telephone number you can use to reach us in the studio here is 0806-601-6694. 0806-601-6694. Call that number and you'll be here with us. 
um, PPRO, uh, are there, okay, we've looked at it before, but then I think it is still important. Now, uh, in the course of moving men, materials, and other services, um, you encounter difficulties in the far-flung riverine communities. Because uh, we, even in the last election, we got some reports that uh, communities very close to the ocean or by the seashore. <laughs> Sometimes your men are scared. You don't, you don't go to places like that. Those far-flung areas, just by the Atlantic Ocean. Well, uh, so long as there are pulling boots in those locations, we do. Good. Well, if you if you say so, but I am telling you that uh, we got reports. Well, uh, if they can be specific so that uh, we we'll look into it if actually there are reports that people didn't go there for elections we'll make sure that this time around we ensure people reach to those communities okay as you are talking with the different uh, security outfits your sister organizations and then the stakeholders i think it will be proper if you have a forum with the key players themselves politicians and there are yes especially the key players the politicians uh, are you having a um, uh, stakeholders meeting with them? Yes, we do have uh, stakeholder meetings and um, uh, in the coming days and weeks we will experience more of such meetings because uh, it's something that we will continue to engage them towards the elections. Okay, um, this time around as you have already told us because it is a very crucial election and a staggered one at that so enough men will be on ground. Now uh, how do you look at the um, high number of uh, participants? Will you be able to police effectively when there are so many players in the field? Well, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, the first uh, aspect of the election is the party primaries. Yes. Uh, and uh, I don't think uh, uh, in such cases... Uh, we normally experience uh, violence because the party primary is not primary that is scattered. It is concentrated at a particular location. Even at a particular location, you, particular you, you, you will secure the... Yes, we will. We will okay. secure. Definitely our presence will be there and uh, we will have enough men to make sure that there is no violence in that location. Then uh, after the party primaries, the number will be limited to the political parties that will eventually contest the elections. But uh, be that as it may, even if it's uh, whatever the number of candidates, we have enough resources at our disposal to make sure that the election is... Okay, we have a caller who has just joined us. Hello? Oh. Please call back again. Hello? Okay, you can continue. We, despite the, the, the number of, uh, uh, of uh, aspirants contesting for the elections, we will have uh, enough manpower to police the entire state. Okay, on election day, um, will it be right where your men are seeing um, giving cover to some key players? Will it be right? Well, before elections, they normally withdraw policemen from VIPs. And I think the tradition will be maintained. Days before the election, all policemen attached to VIPs Will be withdrawn from them and uh, regardless of your position you are not allowed to carry an armed policeman even if it's your oddly or whatever to the hello to the police. hello we have somebody hello good afternoon good afternoon sir uh, my name is innocent i'm calling from amatolo good thank innocent from amatolo thank you very you sound clear and i, I like want that to, i want to i want to thank the pro in the studio yeah thank you mr innocent and now i'm giving advice to the Nigeria police confining the upcoming gubernatorial election. Go ahead. That the police is meant to protect, protect uh, lives and property. That they shouldn't be the ones to taking uh, laws into their hand because previous times police has been used by politicians and some of some some kids, some some of these things are still happening. So. This is the advice I'm giving as they should be the ones to protect life, not the ones to be used by politicians to be taking lives. That is my opinion. Okay, innocent, yes. He, he will react to that. Well, uh, that's a very good uh, advice and uh, we will uh, do our best 
to make sure that um, we do the right thing, you know, because in most cases um, the policemen are properly debriefed before the elections and I will ensure that uh, they are professional in their conduct during the polls. Okay, that's an assurance uh, because uh, he must be speaking from the point of uh, experience. Yes, what he must have seen, things that happen. As you said, um, on the day of election, no armed policeman is supposed to uh, be accompanying any uh, VIP. Um, but apart from maybe the governor or maybe the president, apart from that, should they even accompany anyone? Even uh, the governor or the president, they don't accompany them to the polling booth. Yes. I've witnessed it. I, I've witnessed uh, elections where I was even at the venue where uh, the former president went to cast his votes. He was not with uh, armed escorts. You know? So that I can tell you, they know that that's the practice and they will not do that. Yes, you've been on ground here in Bayelsa for quite a while. And uh, by this time, I want to believe you know the terrain of Bayelsa very well. Uh, uh, we cannot know the places you already know because of your uh, duty. And now, uh, which areas do you consider flashpoints that you will always take into cognizance when you are mobilizing your men and materials? Well, uh, flashpoints uh, in elections uh, are relative because it's because of um, some of those flashpoints may come as a result of the interest okay. particular persons have. And um, it's only when the, we send our men on intelligence that we get to identify those locations, maybe prior to the elections. I cannot come out and say that point A, which was a flashpoint in the last election, will be flashpoint in this election because Perhaps the interest, the people that have interest in that location will, are no longer interested in what will happen during these elections. But there are areas that uh, are prone to violence. One, because of uh, maybe their isolated locations. You know, and um, uh, in some cases, uh, we, we, we look at it because of uh, the records. They will tell you that uh, this particular community, that's the tradition. Year in, year out, election turns out to be violence. So we pay special attention to those areas that we have witnessed such violence, regardless of the elections. But in some cases, areas that we may classify as flashpoints, they may not necessarily turn out to be flashpoints for that particular election. Yes, you threw back uh, a question at us. That is uh, talking on investigative journalism, uh, that we should do more to verify these claims. And uh, how will you rate the collaboration or the assistance you get from the media in Bielsa State? Well, uh, I must uh, commend the media. They have been my friends uh, for this uh, long while. And uh, the, 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 the kind of cooperation I have and the command, and when I mean me, I mean the command I have from the media is, uh, is so good that uh, at, uh, in some instance, very short notice, we get them to cover some of our events, to respond to some issues that concern the state. And in some cases, I must commend them because uh, they have uh, a good source of getting information. In some cases, uh, some of the issues that happen, I will be notified by a journalist before the police is even aware of such incidents. So I must commend them for that. But going forward, I will encourage them to always uh, visit scene of crime. They should try as much as possible. Areas that they can actually visit, they should visit so that they can verify these claims coming from members of the public. And they should uh, equally endeavor to, to constantly liaise with the command most especially for cases they have interest in. Our doors are always opened, we always provide all the needed information to them so that it will enhance their profession to us journalists. Yes, the proliferation of uh, small arms is a dangerous trend and has continued to be for quite some time now. 
And uh, for us ordinary people, I don't know where they are coming from. I learned they are very costly. Now how come during elections, these firearms are like uh, uh, pure water, sorry to use that word, and then uh, untrained personnel who are not licensed, they have access to these firearms and use them at will against fellow brothers and sisters. How, how, how do we arrest that situation? Well, um, recently the Inspector General of Police have uh, set up uh, what we call Operation Puff Ada. And uh, that operation was launched in Bayelsa State Command with about 178 men. And uh, the outfit is fully operational and uh, we have been able to mop up illegal arms from hands of unauthorized individuals. And most of the confession we got from uh, some of the suspects arrested was that uh, they went to as far as Cameroon to get those arms. Uh, some of them from neighboring states to get those arms because most of the arms in circulation are those locally made pistols, what is commonly known as Oka made pistol. Based on our intelligence, we have not been able to identify any place in Bayelsa State where those arms are fabricated. But uh, why that such arms were called Oka made is because of the locations they are made. So we strongly believe that uh, those arms are being brought from neighboring states. And uh, because it is small, uh, they have so many ways of concealing it. But what we always seek for is uh, information from members of the public. Because the recent success we recorded uh, in uh, arresting uh, about three persons that came into Yenigua with two AK-47 was as a result of information from members of the public. So people should endeavor to be curious about what goes around them. Uh, no matter how uh, little the suspicion is, they should endeavor to communicate to us and uh, we'll be able to mop up these illegal arms from hands of unauthorized individuals. Yes, concealment can only come into being because they are being fabricated or manufactured. Uh, why don't we nip it in the board by going after um, the fabricators and their collaborators because that is the only way that is the root cause yes. so let us not cut the grass just uh, uh, on the soil level so what are you doing about it because you have every information well uh, just as I mentioned earlier uh, in this state no I'm not talking of this state yes uh, but uh, I can uh, only be limited to what happens in Bayelsa State because okay. I speak for Bayelsa State. I don't speak for uh, the police hierarchy. Okay. Uh, I speak for Bayelsa State. Okay. Yes. Uh, thanks goodness because uh, uh, Bayelsa is never known <laughs> that uh, people fabricate these uh, firearms. Yes. We thank God. Yes. Uh, now, are you working closely with uh, um, the non-governmental organizations because they play a crucial role as observers and uh, they are independent they give their own reports um how do you inter okay let's take a call here hello oh we lost this caller please call back again so how do you collaborate with these uh, um organizations well uh, so many of um, the ngos are uh I've been coming to visit the Commissioner of Police and uh, we have been interfacing with them and uh, so many of our personnel too uh, have been trained by those NGOs. You know, as I'm talking to you now, there is one uh, training program in the States where some of my staff have been deployed and even this SDN, I was privileged to attend some of their uh, programs. So a lot of the NGOs, uh, Bayelsa State I must say has uh, a lot of NGOs that are interested in police doing the writing, that are interested in educating members of the public about the writing. So going forward, I believe um, the cases of uh, violence during election will be reduced to the barest minimum because of the level of interest non-governmental organizations and other stakeholders have in the process. Yes, um, we have to commend the success 
we just recorded. And that is kudos to the youth. But as a young man yourself, as a youth, what would be your uh, form of advice or admonition to the youth of Bielsa State concerning the forthcoming election? Because they are the foot soldiers. Well, uh, there is this uh, common saying that uh, the politicians uh, does not engage their children in any form of electoral violence. So this is a message the youth should take back. That why should I be encouraged to go and snatch a ballot box? Knowing fully well that in the process I may get killed, I may be arrested, and what will be my fate? Why is this Mr. A, Mr. B not bringing in somebody that is uh, his son or his relative to partake in this act of violence? If I should continue in this line, what will be my fate in the future? Why shouldn't I learn a trade? Why shouldn't I go to school if I've not, uh, if I've not gone to school? Why shouldn't I do something productive for myself that to endanger my life in the process of uh, you know, serving my master? And in the end, what will I benefit from that? So this is a message that someone should sit down and ask himself. When you ask these questions to yourself, you cannot come up with an answer that will satisfy you to obey such instructions from your master. Um, you have... Um uh, youth bodies like the IYC and other such organizations. Have you been interacting with these bodies because uh, they have um, some form of uh, command uh, over the youths of the state? What is that level doing with you? Well, uh, recently the IYC Central, I think that's the one that uh, we normally interface on the frequently the IYC Central Zone and uh, they were in the Commissioner of Police Office uh, on a court civil visit and uh, we interacted to a length concerning issues that affect the youth in Bielsa State and uh, so many uh, issues were raised as to how the police can equally assist you know in some of those uh, uh, issues and uh, I believe that um, the, the IYC have a larger role to play concerning the youth engagement in violence and thuggery and all sorts of things. And uh, they are doing their best because they also noted that uh, for the youth to shun thuggery and violence, they must be engaged. And uh, they promise us that they are going to make sure they explore the available means for these youths to be engaged so that they will shun from violence and other from of uh, Okay, have said that. There are community leaders as well, apart from the traditional leaders. Sometimes these uh, crimes are perpetrated without the knowledge of the traditional rulers. Certain self-made traditional leaders, community leaders are so powerful. Of course, some may be known to you. When you identify such people, what action do you normally take? Well, uh, it's not uh, enough for us to be informed about um, the, the role a particular community, community leader. leader plays in terms of committing crime. Uh, we have to go further to understand uh, his level of involvement in such issues raised. And uh, only when we have credible information credible intelligence about his involvement in particular crime that will go in for arrest. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want a situation whereby we rely on the hearsay and at the end, you know, we will not be able to have something because we are mindful of violating people's rights. So anytime people come up with issues, someone may just fabricate something against you because he is interested in your position as a community leader. So we don't just uh, act based on hearsay. We have to make sure we analyze such information. If they are credible enough, then we send into action. Um, well, from the layman's point of view, 
the commissioner of police in each state is the uh, police uh, helmsman answerable to the uh, inspector general of police now during elections will it be right for police from maybe abuja to just move in and uh, they are with uh, a particular a political part, uh, party or a player trying to uh, provide protection over their master or whatever is it right well uh, police we are not uh, politicians and uh, we are not partisans so even if um, the policeman coming from let's say delta let's say uh, port Harcourt, river state let's say abuja our our training does not allow us to engage in partisan politics. So there is no way a politician, a policeman will identify with a politician. There is no way. It's never done. And uh, why we normally witness um, uh, deployment of more policemen to guard the process is because some of these thugs take advantage of the number of policemen deployed to a particular place to cause chaos. If uh, the community leaders and the youth and members of the public generally are not interested in using talks for violence during the election, there will be no need for us to demand for more manpower to assist us in the elections. But because over time we have witnessed violence in elections, that's why we deploy adequate personnel to make sure that we curtail any form of violence that may arise as a result of the elections. So at any point in time, there is no conflict as far as the police is concerned? No, we cannot rule that out. You cannot have that utopian society where there is no crime or neither conflict. <laughs> conflict is part of us. Yes. And our duty is to make sure that we mediate so that conflict will not arise in the first place. Now, when I say conflict, I mean um, amongst you, because uh, you are non-partisan, yes. But then, somebody may be overzealous. Well, we have a mechanism to checkmate such kind of excesses. Okay. I think it's on that note we have to call it a day. Honestly, we want to thank you very immensely for investing your precious time with us. Of course, you'll be listening to um, election security towards 2019 Bielsa State Governorship election. Well, the sponsors of this program is a Stakeholder Democracy Network, LDN. Our guest has been Superintendent of Police, Asnim Bootswat, the Bielsa State Public Relations, uh, Police Public Relations Officer. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Yes, on behalf of every member the studio crew and the producer of the program, Ebos Owefe. My name is Aiba Tony Wubula. Until the same time, next week we shall be here again. Thank you for being part of the program. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh. So let's have a show, producer.